Hi and welcome to my maths class. Today we're going to do the drawing of calculus graphs. That is usually a cube function or more like it doesn't always have to be a cube function graph but you can still use all the application that we're learning in this to draw other graphs. Now let us first discuss a few things. From what we've learned already you know that by doing derivative of any equation I am getting m. So if I gave you that f of x is equal to x cubed, you can tell me hey, the derivative is 3x squared which is actually m. So you know that the derivative is equal to m. Now what else you know but this is from previous knowledge is that if I gave you a Cartesian plane and I gave you this graph and I told you get me the equation of this line you tell me y is equal to 3 now how is it that y is equal to 3 what is the gradient at this specific point the gradient at this specific point is m is equal to 0 that is the gradient of this specific line that's why had you have y is equal to mx plus c and then you have y is equal to mx plus 3 and your m is 0 you have y is equal to 3 your m on that specific line is 0. Any line that is a horizontal line has a gradient of 0. Now why would this be important? If I give you a graph, let's do the parabola which you are familiar with. This is a turning point. Look at the tangent to that turning point. That turning point has a perfect horizontal tangent. If I give you any other graph, again, if I were to draw a tangent there and I were to draw a tangent there, my gradients would be perfect zeros. Now why is this important in drawing calculus graphs? In order to draw a calculus graph, you need to get the turning points. Now to get the turning points, we use the method where we calculate f of x, which means we get m. But we know that the gradient at a turning point is 0. So once we've created the gradient, we then make it equal to 0. Once you do that, you can solve for x. And if you got x, you know how to get y. Substitute x into the original. So let us determine the turning points of a few graphs before we continue drawing complete graphs. So we're going to do it step by step. Let us do the following equation. f of x is equal to x cubed minus 2x squared minus 15x plus 36. Now, how do I get the turning points? First, you're going to do derivative. You're going to get 3x squared minus 4x minus 15. You should know how to do the derivative from your previous videos where we had taught you how to do the derivative. Now, this gives us m. So, we know m is equal to 3x squared minus 4x minus 15. But we also know that if m is equal to 0, then I'm going to have a turning point. So, we now make this equal to 0. So, I can now solve x. Look at this, right? You did the derivative. You know that the derivative is m. But at 0 only is my m a turning point. This is allocated a mark. In your final metric exam, if they ask you to draw it, where m is equal to 0 is allocated a mark if you know it's a turning point. So you have to always put it equal to 0. A lot of children go on, they start solving the equation, but they don't write the 0, which means they lose a mark. Now, once I've done this, I can solve for x. Solving for x is your normal uh, quadratic method. You can use the formula. You can use um, 
normal cross method, any way that you already used to solving quadratic equations. So I have 3x plus 5 and x minus 3. That gives me 3x squared minus 15 plus 5 minus 9x. Perfect. Now solve for x. So I got 3x is equal to minus 5. x is equal to minus 5 over 3. And then I have x is equal to 3. Now, why do I have two x values? When you were doing a parabola, you had one turning point. But when you do a calculus graph, you have two turning points, which means I have two coordinates. I have an x and a y here, and I have an x and a y here. So you have two coordinates, therefore the need for two x values. Now how do you get y? You get y by substituting into the original. So I'm going to take my minus 5 over 3, and you're going to substitute into the original. Be careful. To get y, the rule is the same. Always substitute into the original. So I got y is equal to minus 5 over 3 cubed minus 2 into minus 5 over 3 squared. So y is equal to 50 comma 8 1. Then if I look there's two coordinates. So I've done minus 5 over 3. So this coordinate is minus 5 over 3 and 50 comma 8. Now what's the next one? y is equal to 3 cubed minus 2 into 3 squared minus 15 into 3 plus 36. y is equal to 0. So my second coordinate is 3 and 0. Now, what we've done is, we've got the two turning points. Now, you must remember, just like how you had learned, a positive parabola, a positive A in a parabola gives you a happy face, and a negative A gives you a sad face. In calculus graphs, we have a similar thing. A positive A with your x cubed, basically. So, I'm talking about your x cubed you're going to get a graph that goes sad and then happy. So you start off sad, but at the end, you end off very happy. Remember with graphs, when we read, we always read from left to right. And negative ax cubed is going to give us a happy and then a sad graph. Now, why would that be important? This here is a positive. Now, positive graph means that I'm going in the form of I'm going sad and then I'm going happy. Now remember this is just a rough sketch but what it shows you is that the top turning point so in other words the maximum turning point is on the low x value and the minimum turning point is on the high x value. Remember this is an x value line these are your negative, these are your positive, but even if they were both positive or they were both negative, what you must remember is the maximum is the lowest x. Now from these two, which is the lowest x? Minus 5 over 3 is lower than 3, which means at this point, the turning point is a maximum. And then your higher x value is going to be the minimum, which means at 3, it's going to go up. So if you were drawing this graph freehand and you had a Cartesian plane and you were told to draw this graph just with the turning points, then we know at 3 and 0 is a point. So if I had estimated maybe 3 and 0 is here, 3 and 0, and then my second point is at minus 5 over 3, that is like minus 1 comma 7, so you could say we're drawing so let's say we got a point there, which is minus 5 over 3. But what was the y value? The y value was almost 51. So let's say I went totally up and there's my point. 
So here I've got minus 5 over 3 and over 50 comma 8. Please remember it's on the positive y. Now I know this is going to be the maximum which means it's a sad face and this is going to be the minimum which means it's a happy face and then it's a matter of joining and that would be your calculus graph that you had drawn only with your turning points. Right, so when you start we need to know how to draw your turning points before you can draw anything. Now we know turning points means you're going to do derivative then you're going to make it equal to 0. You're going to solve for x. Once you solve for x, you're going to substitute and get y. And then at all times, you're going to remember, is it a positive happy graph or is it a sad graph? Now, what would the next step be? All right. The next step would be what you had always been doing since the beginning of graphs. x-intercept and y-intercept. Let us take the same equation. Okay, if we have f of x is equal to x cubed minus 2x squared minus 15x plus 36. Y-intercept means x is equal to 0. Let's do that one because that is usually the easiest. So y would equal to 0 cubed minus 2 into 0 all squared minus 15 times 0 plus 36. That would mean y is equal to 36. So what is the coordinate? The coordinate is 0 and 36. Now let us do the x-intercept. The x-intercept is something you had learned when we had done factorizing of 3D. We had done this method where we took out, we found a factor and then you would use this method to solve it. If I got x cubed minus 2x squared minus 15x plus 36. In order to draw these graphs, you must know how to factorize cube equations. If you are not okay with this, you need to go and learn it under factorizing of 3Ds, which we had done in the previous videos of grade 12 work. Right, we need to start by finding a factor. In this case, I have that 3 is a factor. Now, if 3 is a factor, then it means x minus 3 is our first, our first bracket. How do I get the second bracket? x times what will give me x cubed, that would be x squared. Minus 3 times what will give me my uh, positive 36. Minus 3 times minus 12 gives me a positive 36. Here I've got minus 3x squared. I want minus 2, which means I have to add 1. So this would give me 1x. So my factorizing is x minus 3, x squared plus x minus 12 is equal to 0. Now we can factorize this bracket further. So we have x minus 3 and then this one becomes from your factorizing, this is a square factorizing, a quadratic equation. So that is your grade 11 work. Now it's completely factorized. If we solve for x, we have x is equal to 3, x is equal to 3, x is equal to minus 4. Our coordinates would be 3 and 0, 3 and 0, and minus 4 and 0. Now, how do we draw the graph? When you're drawing the graph, you must remember that this is part of your turning points. We have our y-intercept is 0 and 36. If you go to your graph, it means at the y-intercept, we have 36. Then we have two points. We have 3 and 0 and minus 4 and 0. The 3 and 0 is already in. This one here is minus 4. So this would be your calculus graph. Now look at our graph. We did the turning points. And then we did the x-intercepts. And we did the y-intercepts. The next question that they ask you is, get the points of inflection. Now, what is the points of inflection? The points of inflection is actually 
the exact middle point between your two turning points. That is what the points of inflection is. It is the midpoint of your two turning points. We have minus 5 over 3 and 50 comma 8 and 3 and 0. And the original question is x cubed minus 2x squared minus 15x plus 36. Now the reason I'm showing you this is because there's two ways to do it. Number one, you can do it the midpoint way. The way you had done it in your analytical geometry. Where you say x1 plus x2 over 2 and y1 plus y2 over 2. In this case, I'd have minus 5 over 3 plus 3 divided by 2 and 50 comma 8 plus 0 divided by 2 which gives me 2 over 3 and 25 comma 4. The second method of doing it is if you do derivative you'd have 3x squared minus 4x minus 15. But if you do derivative again so it's called a second derivative you'd have 6x minus 4. Now when you make your second derivative equal to 0 and you solve it, so we have x is equal to 2 over 3. Then to get y, you substitute your x into the original. Taking x and you're putting it in, so we have 2 over 3 all cubed minus 2 into 2 over 3 squared minus 15, 2 over 3 plus 36 equals 1. What I wanted to show you is that the one way is that you can do midpoint, which you had learned in grade 10. The second way, which teachers like to use more because it's in the name. So they say, get the points of inflection. It's second derivative. You solve for x and then you solve for y. Now remember, this question is worth about two marks. If you look at the work difference between the first style and the second style, then it's much easier to do midpoint. Points of inflection is midpoint. Just remember, it's the midpoint of your two turning points. So our points of inflection is 2 over 3 and 25 comma 4. So we could say it's somewhere there, 2 over 3 and 25 comma 4. And that is your point of inflection. Now what I wanted to tell you is, do you notice that when I was drawing the graph, I put all the coordinates in. I didn't simply do this. Draw a graph, put a 3 there, put a coordinate here, put a coordinate here. At the turning points, I intentionally put the coordinates. It is not because I'm being fancy or I'm being bored. When they ask you, draw the graph, show the turning points, you need to be clear. With the intercepts, they're still okay. But if it was me, I would also put 0 and 36 and I would put minus 4 and 0. With the turning points, if you have just the minus 5 or 3, but you don't have that and for this you have 3 and you don't have the 0 they will penalize you you will be marked down if you don't have it so even though your drawing can be 100% right you don't have those coordinates you're losing marks make sure you do this correctly they are easy marks if you know your work thank you for watching